Welcome everyone to the Road by Road Garden Show, the best dead gum gardening show on the radio and the internet as well. Glad to have you this evening. We've got a special guest in the house. We've got a special topic we're going to be talking about. So our topic tonight is honeybee garden strategy on the homestead. And I think this is a good one and a very important one. And we have a special guest with us, Wayne here. Wayne Odom from Lakewood Farm. Wayne is my bee buddy. Everybody needs a bee buddy. That's right. So Wayne's my bee buddy. He's the guy I call on to have problems, questions, or just need a little comforting sometimes when we're talking bees. And 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 Wayne, you like I am. You like the garden as well. I do. And I you're my seed man. I'm yeah. your bee man. I'm your seed, seed man. If yeah, I need some seeds or questions, That's I give right. Greg a call, and yeah. uh, he tells me what I need to what I need to do. What I'm doing wrong. So you have a hobby farm. I do. Not a money-making farm at Well, all. I was going to say, that's code for not making money, that's right. hobby farm. And 40 acres, and it's blueberries, fish, um, and you name it, it's it's endless. Bees, uh, garden, uh, have a little bit of everything. Fruit trees? Fruit trees, uh, lemons, limes, peaches, pears, persimmons. So, And uh, deer. You're, you're retired now. I'm retired. So you got plenty of time to get all I that have plenty stuff done. Honeydews are pretty much take. Yeah. Every, all my time. But. Yep. Wayne, you south of Moultrie. Yep. Just a little bit, what, a mile or two south of Moultrie, something like that? Uh, about about two miles. Yeah, okay. So good deal. We got Wayne here, and he's going to share some insights because he has a lot of, he's been doing this bee thing a lot longer than I have. He's going to share some of his insights and some of the things that he has helped me along the way, and we're going to talk about bee strategy on the homestead. But also, I want to tell you all something else about Wayne. Wayne's daughter, Ivy, has, she works for Southern Living, and she has her own uh, channel. She's a, what I call a YouTube personality for Southern Living. Yep. And she has a, a show called Hey Y'all. Hey Y'all. Uh, you can follow her at, at Ivy Odom uh, or Southern Living uh, Magazine and you can follow her on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, TikTok. She's, she's on all of them. Yeah. She does a great job. She, 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 as, as I've told you before off camera, she has, she's She's friendly to the camera. Well, thank you. Thank yep. you. She has a great personality. So check Ivy out. She does a lot of southern cooking. She does cooking. Um, Canning. She built her own greenhouse. Wow. And, uh, gonna do some seeds that you yep. send her and uh, try to do some recipes uh, with the seeds. Yep. Whatever grows. So. so let's talk about what's going on in the garden. Now, we're in the middle of gardening time here in South Georgia. My garden is just growing great. It's that time of year where I just love because my corn's growing in. If anybody loves to grow corn, it's me. I can honestly, I can sit out there and hear it grow sometimes. It's a very peaceful time. Watermelons are start. I know it's just they start to put on runners, so they're starting to grow. Tomatoes, my tomato crop is great. It's over knee high. Everything, we're gathering squash. Potatoes are not quite there because we had plants so late. It was wet, but it's just about to get to that time of year so we can eat out of the garden almost every meal enjoying squash for the last week it's just a wonderful time of year that i enjoy so much the days get longer and we have some pretty afternoons you can get out there and enjoy the garden now what do you got going you, on your you garden? need to call me about your potatoes because i've already dug mine well i got a little late start <laughs> <laughs> a little late start um i have squash okra um i got a little bit of advice from you on how to plant my okra and when to plant it yep um cucumbers i have some peppers tomatoes i have raised beds i was a ground farmer for many many years uh, but Ivy taught me to, into building some raised flower beds and gardens and I love it. Uh, really? How, how does it, it compare so to you versus in ground? Man, you don't have now to keep in mind, I'm you're old. Just, there's just two of y'all at home. Right. Just so you're basically wife. like I am, you just growing for two people. Right, just grow for two people but most time you have enough vegetables to feed a hundred. Right. Um, but I don't think I lost n as much space with my raised beds. I have six of them versus what I had in my garden. It's in the same space my garden was in. By the time you till, you know, two foot wide, whatever, with a tiller, and you have all those rows, yeah. um, you learn to consolidate and uh, less weeds. You don't have to bend over as much. The, the soil's easy to dig in. Uh, it's great. I wish you I'd know, have done it 10 years ago. One of the, I often say this, the raised beds get warmer quicker. So you normally, your, your mm -hmm. plants mature a little quicker in the springtime. The only downside to me with raised beds is they do dry out a they little do. quicker than yep. in the ground. So you probably need to prepare drip irrigation drip irrigation, or some type of irrigation system to help with that. Besides that, it is a win-win situation, especially for somebody that's just starting gardening yep. because it makes it so easy and so easy to con contain it. 
Have you ever noticed back in the day when you scored in, uh, in the ground, we just have this tennis every year to get a little bigger and a little bigger and a little bigger, bigger because yeah. it's so easy to do that. Yeah. Next thing you know, you got way more garden that you can tend to and it gets away and from way you. too many seeds you or get, grass. Yeah, weeds. you get frustrated and you give up. Yeah. And so the raised beds do contain yourself somewhat. And uh, yeah, I think it's a great way to go. Uh, it's Mine's a little, city garden. I have rock all around it now and it looks pretty. And, right. You know, whatever, but it does grow a lot of vegetables and I'm happy with it. The initial cost is a little bit more because you got to do some work. You got to do, do a little bit. And I use treated material, and there's a lot of pros and cons about treated material. Right. You do your research, but uh, out of all the research I did, I'm very comfortable that I'm not getting any leaching from the treated material to my raised garden beds. Right. So let's talk about bee strategy on the homestead because I think this is extremely important, and I think this is something a lot of people don't see the same way we do it. Now, I think if you got a homestead, you're going to have to have a honeybee or a pollinator strategy. And I noticed the other day when I was out there in the garden, I have developed this strategy unbeknownst to me. I just kind of did it. Next thing I know, I realized that I had, I had this strategy going on for pollinators throughout the year. And I thought, well, man, this would be a great topic to have on because bees are so important in the garden standpoint, but also being a good steward of the land and, you know, just doing the right thing. You got to enjoy I mean, I know some people are allergic to bees, but most people, if you've ever watched a honeybee, you've got to be amazed at that animal most or that insect. bees will not mess with you if you don't mess with them and try to aggravate right. them. You know, you can walk beside them, they fly around you and just don't slap them, let them do their thing and they'll, they'll leave. Yeah, just talk to the bees. Right, let's talk to them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but so, when you said homestead, you know, you can raise bees in a neighborhood as long as your HOH uh, approves or whatever, but... A lot of people have them, they have one or two acres and they pollinate their little raised garden in their backyard and the neighbor's flowers and neighbor's garden. So you don't have to have a lot of land. Well, you know, if you're growing bees. vegetables, you need bees for pollination yep. for the most part. Now, there's starting to be some varieties out there like cucumbers that you don't need. For the most part, you need bees for your squash, your melons, your cucumbers, things like that. But also for your fruit trees. A lot of your fruit trees require pollination, so you need them for that. But they're just a cycle of life that we need to embrace and we need to be a part of and we need to have a strategy for having these on here. Now, I'm going to go over why uh, my strategy just for a minute and then you can talk about your strategy. This is what I have done. So I make sure that I plant more than one type of clover in my garden as a cover crop in the wintertime. So right now, I've got a red crimson clover, which is blooming. Well, I planted my bursom clover, which is a white clover at the same time, but knowing it was a later or more heat tolerant variety, it's just now starting to bloom while my crimson clover is in full bloom. So my bees are just eating up that crimson clover. And then they'll move over to the bursom clover. And then behind that, I have buckwheat planted that's coming along. Now that buckwheat is gonna be there when the heat gets a little more and my clover plays out. I've also got sunflowers planted. Now I've got zinnias planted, but zinnias is more kind of my keep myself out of trouble <laughs> flower. I agree. And then uh, I got the zinnias, but I keep sunflowers throughout the summer growing for that. But you know, here's one more thing. Now I thought about this the other day when I went outside. I got white Dutch clover in my ditch. I've got some clovers in my yard that I did not spray that I left there and they're blooming. And that's also creating a a habitat for those bees or something for those bees to feed on. Now, let's, uh, I have probably sprayed more clover than most people have ever seen. So I'm not, I'm not throwing you under the water if you've sprayed it before, but I have come to realize later in life that sometimes those weeds that we think are weeds are actually have a benefit in doing a great thing for our pollinators. And those clovers that are growing in your ditch or maybe in your yard, I want you to look at them with maybe a little different attitude, a little different perspective than what you have in the past as in being an unsightly weed but being a benefit. Everything has a purpose. You know, for the bee community out yeah. here. So that's kind of some of the things that I got going on. I try to keep something for the bees throughout the year. Now, there are going to be certain times in the wintertime when it's hard to do that, in the late fall or early winter. But for the most part, I try to do that. I try to spray my chemicals late in the afternoon, mm -hmm. early in the morning when my bees are not active. And I try not to use, or I don't use any imidacloprids, any neonicotoids, which are really dangerous for the bee population. And you can, your yard, we have centipede grass. And if you go out in the yard when it's seeding, if you'll notice, you can, I went out there one day and there was thousands of bees in my yard. And I'm wondering, what are they collecting from, just from your grass, just from your yard? So there's, they 
collect a lot of different you know, flowers. I, I, different I've seen things. that before, but I forgot about that. I they know, love yeah. centipede grass. Yeah, sure it has is. to be the seed head has to be maturing, so you're going to have to let your grass go a little let bit longer taller. than you normally. Yeah. And that, normally that happens in the late summer. You hate to cut your grass because right. a lot of bees out there. You know. So what's your strategy on the home as far as bees? Same thing? Similar? Well, mine's totally different. I don't, <laughs> I don't really plant much for my bees. Really? Um, you know, I have my garden, have all my stuff around. I have my bees mainly for my for the wax, for the honey, for the pollination. Um, I'm in a, a rural area where there's lot, so much farming around in, in a swamp or a, a lowland of a creek bottom. So you get all those trees that are blooming. Um, I, I just don't do it. Maybe I should. Um, but you're but in a little bit habitat, different habitat now. You have habitat, a lot of woods right. close to you. I don't have a lot of woods yeah. here close by. So it depends by. on where you live. Um, right. You know, what, what your goal is. Yep. You know, even some of the mustards, we see some of the wild mustards growing here. Most people don't understand, and I didn't for years, bees love those wild mustards. A lot of the fields will have the mustards growing in the wintertime, and they love that. They love such things as, uh, heck, I, I did some wildflower mixes. So we had an area in the uh, beside the yard that we really didn't use, and I put out some wildflower mixes last year, and those have really, they're perennial, annuals and perennials, but these have, they have done really well and drawn a lot of bees in there too. So little things like that you can do. Different environments will probably, you know, you can look at a strategy different. If you're in an urban area, if you're in a very rural area, you can do things differently. Just like you're in probably in a more rural area. I'm in a, I'm in a rural area also, but I'm in a more developed rural right. area, and we have a lot of commercial agriculture right around here. And bees, I'll give you some trivia. I have to read my notes here. Yeah, they will fly 15 miles per hour. They're, they they flap their wings 11,400 times a minute. Yep. Um, it takes one bee that will make a one twelfth of a teaspoon of honey in its lifespan. Wow. One twelfth of a teaspoon wow. of honey. That's a lot of bees to make a gallon of honey. That's a lot of bees to make a gallon of honey. <laughs> um, and a bee's life is only 40 days on average. Right. A queen will live two to three years. So bees are it's just fascinating. You know, they can travel anywhere to one, two miles. You know, as far up, as forages. For up food. to five. But they said an average is one, two miles. Right. A bee would have to fly 90,000 miles uh, three times around the earth to make one pound of honey. Mm. So they, they get around, they fly. So uh, <clears throat> what kind of gum does a bee chew? What kind of gum? Sweet gum? Mm-mm. Bumble gum. Corny joke of the day for you folks out there. Yep. <laughs> you knew it was coming. You just I didn't knew, know I knew it was yeah, coming. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, bees are, are a must, but not only bees, any type of pollinator. We focus on bees because we love bees because they got yeah. so much to give back. They now, do. you can, you can sh to start your own bees, it's very, it can be intimidating. It can be. You're gonna, if you talk to 100 beekeepers, you're going to have 200 answers. Um, you have to do what you think's right, find you a mentor. Um, a bee buddy. A bee buddy. Um, and... and you know, then after you talk to them, you take away and do what you think is right and learn from it and make make mistakes and uh, move forward. So let's go over the ways a fellow could get started or a lady could get started in the bee business. You can buy packaged bees, which buy. is probably the most common. It is. It's three pounds of bees. Yeah. Uh, has a queen in it. Um, or you can buy a five pound package. Um, you can buy a hive already established. Well, now the package bees, you can you, most time you can order those. You can mail order those. Right, you'll but ship them. It's probably the my least favorite way to get started. That's how I got started. Is it? I don't order anymore. I don't either. I, I didn't have good luck with them. Yeah. The second thing you could do is you can buy a hive or what they call a new, which is a miniature hive from a beekeeper. Has five frames in it. Already has a most of the time already has a laying queen. Has brood. Uh, has bees. Has everything you need to get established and transfer that to a fully to a, to a hive. Probably the most expensive way to get started, but it is the, the safest way to get started. Is it either buying your hive or a new? Right. It's established. It's ready to go. Yep. Put it in your yard and... What, $150, $175 dollars for a hive and new somewhere in that neighborhood uh, now? About. Yeah. So you, you so, you, so you got that. You can actually get started game day. You get started, boom, you, you got your hive of bees. Or you can trap them. Trapping is something you can do, which is free, by the way. It's free. I've trapped 18 or caught swarms and you hang a trap i've got one here we'll show you in a second but you hang it in a tree my best place that i have i have an old deer stand beside my barn um eight or ten rungs up and i set it on the seat of that deer stand 
and I've caught most of my bees out of that deer stand. So I just walk up the ladder, take the trap down, transfer them to a beehive, and be good to go. Now this this area is way down in the bottom, you told me, like a hardwood bottom? or it's a, it, Yes, it's a hardwood bottom. Um, I have some, of course, dry land where my home is, but then it just keeps getting lower to the to the creek bottom, Oakville Co Creek. Hmm. So there's a water source down at the bottom. There is. Okay. In my pool and Right. Now, do you else. think you're catching swarms off your bees, or are you catching native bees? You, Not that it matters. I, because of where I am, I'm probably catching, I, I, it's a guess, I could be catching half of wild swarms. I would think I'm catching another bee farmer's bees that have left their hive, or really they don't leave the hive completely unless something's wrong. They split off. That's how they multiply. Even though the queen lays eggs for that hive to survive, to multiply they they swarm they built make a queen they swarm with half the bees and they go to a new home and that's what i catch is that new home and you know the way i tell people is people say well let them do their natural thing well what happens is they might move into somebody's eve of their house or into a, a floor and then they exterminate them and kill them I and mean, they don't tell people or you know, they call someone to remove them anyway. So right. I'm giving them a good home and try to take care of them. And, and you're getting a hive of bees out I'm getting you. a hive of bees. Now we said that you actually wanted to count me into trapping. So we set, actually set a trap out this morning. So let's, and you, I got a trap from you. So let's show you a trap here and uh, and kind of go over that. Now trap is not something you probably want to start doing if you're just getting into the bee business. But if you, after you get in a little while, it's definitely a good thing to start doing because you can replenish your, you can actually grow your bee colonies by trapping or if you want to make you a little extra income. You can. It's a great way to, it's a good skill to have regardless. If this was a, this was what, it, what you call the nuke, right. um, but it's a little bit longer. Uh, this is the frame that goes into a beehive and it's a deep, what they call a deep frame. Mm -hmm. It's plastic, already honeycomb. Um, Foundation. Yep. And then what they do is they spray a wax on it and it allows the bee to start forming their own honeycomb. You can see some of the wax on there. Um, helps them get started quicker. And you put five of these inside this frame and you get a cotton ball and you spray some of this Swarm Commander or Swarm lemongrass oil. You know, I think that's lemongrass oil. I think it is too. <laughs> You know, with their little, who knows? It didn't yeah. say lemongrass oil on it anywhere this morning, but after we, uh, after we you sprayed smell it, the both, they yeah, smell the same. My guy says, man, that's lemongrass oil. <laughs> but it, it works. It, it works is. Good. It's a common lure used for honeybees, yes. lemongrass oil. Spray it on a cotton ball, a couple, couple sprays, two sprays, three sprays. Drop it inside the box and hang it in a tree or put it on a deer stand or put it on a table by your barn. No, it works. I want to just say it works if, it, if you got it off the ground. So you normally, we strap ours to a tree. Correct. Normally eight feet up about average in the shade uh, on a uh, fenced row or, uh, you know, somewhere of that nature. And you wait, you can, I've, I've set one out and caught one the next day. Really? Um, I've now when you set it out here, you see the, the, uh, the opening right here. You have the round big opening out there for the queen to be able to go into the trap. The queen and the bees. What happens, they'll swarm and there'll be a bunch of bees several thousand, 20,000 balled up around here. And then once the queen moves in, all the bees will just go in this hole. And you move it in the even time, you turn the dial, close it off, and carry it to your bee yard. Now, now I notice these little slits here. Just this for right the, here. For the air, yep. Well, the one with the little slit down there, is that for That's just? to keep the queen from coming out. The queen can't come out, but the workers can the go workers in and can, out. Correct. So if you didn't, if you had a few days that you had to leave them in the trap, you could move it on this correct. side and the, they could, everything still worked, queen's still good. Right, multi-use okay. dial. Right, yep. And it works well. I've caught, uh, my whole bee yard except three of my hives are all from swarms that I've caught this year. Mm -hmm. Do you find the swarms are a little more hardier? Um, I think that's more, that's a lot of controversy with, um, with beekeepers. Like again, if you ask a hundred beekeepers, um, they say uh, the swarms do not last or are not as hardy. Other people say a swarm is more hardier because it could come from a wild swarm. Um, I have not had a, an issue. Um, we forgot to tell you to turn your phone off. I yeah. turned it off, but it's my alarm for okay. checking. Your bees? Uh, checking my bees. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so we, uh, we talk about bees. I'll tell you one of the major problems you can have if you do kill your bees is the metacloprin. Now, metacloprin is the systemic insecticide that we used to use a lot of, and they still sell it at even your home, deep, or your big box stores. Let me leave it at that. 
And we're going to put the name up there on the screen. It's called imidacloprid. If you're using this chemical in your landscape, and they sell it as a rose treatment, as a crepe myrtle treatment, it can get in that plant, and when that bee lights on that bloom, it can cause that yep. bee. If you read the sticker when you buy these at some of the box stores, it tells you that it's been sprayed with, I think, that chemical. Right, yeah. and, and that's something, if you're concerned, which I think you should be, about having a good bee stretch, leave that one alone. And simply, all you got to do is look at this word right here and look at the active ingredient. If that is the active ingredient, I would leave it alone. Now, does it work? It works wonderful, but it's rough on the bees. The bees yeah. So it's uh, some people think it's got something to do with the, uh, the colony disorder thing we have going on over bees. Now, they think that may have one of the, be one of the issues with the, the bee population declining like it is. So that's just a simple little tip you can, you can do to be. It's like medicine you take. Right. Take it to take care of a certain condition, but it could cause something else. Right. And that chemical helps, but it also can hurt something else. But not only do you get great pollination from the bees, but you get some other things as well. Get some honey that I'm going to give you. That's Lakewood Farm well, honey. Well, heck yeah. Harvested last year. I put honey in my coffee. I do too. Every I go morning. through about a gallon of honey every two months. I love honey. I, I try to stay away from sugar, but I use honey. You can make some chapstick. I haven't made any yet. Lady gave me this that has bees, and I'm going to try this my next wax melting. Um, there's several things you can do with your with your bees. We collected about five pounds of, um, I say five pounds, it was about five gallons of honey off from Cloverfield I had one time. That's a pretty good job. You can get off of one of these frames around eight pounds of honey and on an average hive has 10 frames some have eight so you can get 60 70 pounds of honey five gallons if i harvest one full 10 frame box that's full of honey on both sides i usually get five gallons of honey and five gallons of honey is enough to last me for nearly it'll last me all year if yeah I don't give it as gifts or yeah. whatever i right. have to keep my wife you know when she wants to grab one right. give it as so a gift. Whoa, 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 how special that. that's there. right yeah. that's gold yeah so there you have it, folks. Let me show this right here. This is just a few flowers we got blooming in the garden now. And there's some zinnias. I believe that's the ice cream zinnia right there. That's some Miss Hoss picked those for us this morning. It's coming out of her garden. Zinnias, which we love. And also the bees love them as well. I want to show you a couple of things here, Wayne. We're going to move across from the bee thing for just a minute. Why don't you look at that tomato that's right there? That's pretty tomato. I saw those underneath there. I think now, where do you think that tomato take was growing at? Make a tomato sandwich or not? Yeah. Where? You where? Think um in your garden nope that tomato was grown about a mile from your house oh, in wow. Moultrie, georgia that's here we nice are the tomato. first of may and, and that's a ripe ready. tomato andy webb grew that and brought me the other day now when i looked at it i knew something strange because we're not supposed to have tomatoes for another 30 days that's right at least so when i looked at it uh the telltale sign was look at the stem right there you see a small stem mm -hmm. when i seen that small stem i said that's an indeterminate tomato and I, I knew it, so I got to question Andy, because that's what he really wanted me is to question. He grew these in the greenhouse. He grew them in pots, and he sent me some pictures. Nice crop of tomatoes, but he grew a nice, indeterminate crop. I think he said he's been eating tomatoes for two or three wow. weeks. So I need to go see Andy. Well, I thought it was wonderful. As much as I love tomatoes, what if we could have increased our season on tomatoes by three or four weeks so we could have tomato sandwiches a lot longer than we normally did. Wouldn't that be well, great? Well, it's a sharp knife, too. It is a sharp knife. So let me stick right here. Put a little salt on that. I'll let you taste you that. It has some pepper, too. Well, I thought I, yeah, I thought about that. If it was too I'm late. take a bite here in front yeah, of everybody? Yeah, let's taste test it. Good, cheers. That's pretty good. It's tomato. pretty good. I don't know if it's as good as my, my regular tomatoes come in, but it's pretty good. But for a greenhouse? I usually don't. I've never eaten a tomato like that. It has really? to be on a piece of bread with mayonnaise. Yeah. Well, it may start a new habit for you. Right. Well, like a persimmon. Yeah. So we may carry some of them in the near future. I thought it was interesting. I, I have never grown them like that this time of year. And what variety? I'm not sure. He told me the variety, but it's not one we carry, so I mm -hmm. can't say it. You know what I'm saying? If it was one we carried, yep. I could tell you. But he actually got the seeds from somewhere else, which I told him. He probably need to get church by seeds. pray about that Sunday. Gonna, yep. But they're anyway. gonna eat his tomatoes and talk about them. That's right. He needs to get his seeds from yeah. you. So there's a nice tomato. Here's another one here that he brought me. Those are pretty tomatoes. And they're smooth. They're nice and smooth. I would say that was grown in a field in yep. South Georgia. Had All many, right. many tomato fights with a tomato that big. We'll do a little product spotlight here real quick. 
that I normally do earlier, but I didn't. So we got a new sunflower in called Mardi Gras. And these Mardi Gras, what is unique about them, it is a blend of sunflowers, which we don't see a lot of. We don't see a lot of mixes or blends. But this is a blend. But what's neat about this one is, is there's a small one, a dwarf, and then there's a tall one. Now the tall one probably gets five or six foot, but we got a dwarf of the exact same sunflower. So that, what that does is it gives you an opportunity if you've got a raised bed or if you've got a small area, maybe containers, you wanted to grow some, grow some dwarfs in, you could do that. Or if you've got a big area, you could grow the tall ones in. But what about this? What if you put dwarfs around the outside and planted the tall right. ones in the inside and you created that cascading Just effect. like you do flowers or whatever yeah. in the garden. So anyhow, Mardi Gras, the dwarf or the blend. Now the regular, the tall one, excuse me, the tall one, the Mardi Gras, we just call it the Mardi Gras blend, but it is the taller one of the two. So that's our product. And when do they mature? Oh, they won't take long, 60 days. So yeah, it's just like your regular sunflower. Now these are branching sunflowers, yeah. so they're not like our Pro Cut series which is one and done. These will branch off and have several different flowers on them. So, a good sunflower there. I want to give a quick update on our Hope fundraising for Francis. Man, y'all have really stepped up the game. I got numbers here somewhere. We have raised $2,487.51 for Francis. Francis is an employee of ours that comes down with breast cancer. So we're doing a breast cancer fundraising for, for Francis and um, if we meet more than her needs, then we're going to donate the rest of it to somebody cool. else that has that issue or a, uh, an organization that can help. We think it's important. It has struck us hard here at Horse Tools, and we're proud that our customers have stepped up and helped us on that. We do have these back in stock. $2,487 for that is great. Uh, another couple of things, if I can find them right here. We got some new stickers, Wayne. There. Well, that's pretty. I need one of those or yeah. two. So, show everybody what we got here. We got them in green, we got them in brown. Get dirty refrigerator mates. You can put that on your four wheeler, your yeah, golf anything cart. Anything that's metal to stick to. Now, you get one of these, you still get stickers in your order, but if you make an order, you get one of these, and I'm not going to tell you which one it is because we mix them up, just get one of these in each order and uh, put it on your refrigerator. But every time you go in your house, you look at old hoss, get dirty. All right. That's pretty much it, folks. We have uh, had a good show talking about. I've enjoyed things. it. Yeah. If you have any questions, they want to, they can friend me on Instagram. And well, let's uh, talk I'll, about your Instagram. It's uh, Farmer Wayno at Farmer Wayno on Instagram. Send me a private message, and I'll try to answer any questions that that I can. Yeah, good deal. All right, folks. Well, thank you for joining us, and maybe we've enticed you, or educated you or encouraged you to be bee friendly and have a pollinator bee strategy on your farm, your homestead, your garden, or your your place. You know, your yep. little kingdom there, you can be happy to them. Treat them like they're somebody because they are, they and, are. Uh, and have a good strategy to keep them around so that you have good pollination, you get to enjoy the fruits of their labor. Thank you all so much, and uh, get out there and get dirty.